guys. So here we have part one of the required practical of F equals MA. Before we carry on further, let's identify our variables. Our independent variable is the force. In order to calculate the force, we do mass times gravitational field strength, and it is 9.8 meters per second. But for this required practical purposes, to make everything simpler, we want to say our gravitational field strength is 10 meters per second. Our other variable, so our de dependent variable, is the acceleration. That, that's what we're measuring. Our control variable is the mass of the trolley. The other control variable that we're keeping constant is the distance travelled by the trolley. So we're, how we're going to measure our distance is from the light gate to the start of the trolley. So we know our, our other variables in order to help use these following equations. So we know that u, our initial velocity, is zero meters per second. Our distance of the card is 0 0.1. And our distance of the trolley being from start to finish is 0 0.5. So as our step, if I release the mass over here, the trolley will pass through the light gate and the light gate will read the distance of the card. So we can calculate our final velocity. So we know our final, our, uh, final time, which is given by the light gate and the distance of the card, which give us a final velocity. And we can use that final velocity in this equation here. So our initial velocity is zero. Our final velocity is calculated. And we know our distance of the trolley traveled and we can find our acceleration. Once we have found our acceleration for our first force, which is F, uh, 5 newtons, we are going to remove one of the masses and place it into the trolley. The reason why we're going to place it into the trolley is to ensure that the mass of the system remains constant. We have worked out our acceleration for 5 newtons, now we're going to find out our acceleration for 4 newtons. We have removed one of the uh, masses from the force and place it onto the trolley to ensure the mass of the system remains constant. Once we have calculated the acceleration for 4 newtons, we are again going to remove one of the masses from the uh, force and place it onto the trolley, again to make sure that mass of the system remains constant. So now we've got three newtons of force and then the, lock, the other two masses on the trolley. Once we calculate, calculate the acceleration for the third, oh sorry, three newtons, we are going to remove one of the masses again and place it onto the trolley to, again to ensure that the mass remains constant. So we're going to do one go of when the force is five newtons, we have just ensure there's no masses on the trolley to make sure that it is a fair experiment. We are going to remove this stopper to ensure the trolley passes through the light, uh, light gate and we're going to have a stopper here to prevent it going any further to, to make sure the practical is nice and safe. Alright, let's do this. So, as you can see the card has passed through the light gate and the time taken for the card to pass through that light gate has taken 0.043 seconds. All right, so let's calculate the final velocity. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.043, which will give us our final velocity as 2.2, keep it two decimal places, sorry, 2.33 meters per second. So we can calculate our acceleration from our previous equation where a is equal our final velocity which is 2.33 squared minus our initial velocity which is 0 squared divided by 2 times our distance which is 0 0.5 so 2.33 squared will give us 5.4 289. So acceleration is equal to 5.4289 divided by 1. So therefore our acceleration is 
5.4 to 2 cm figures meters per second squared. All right, so our analysis of this required practical is to uh, produce a graph where our y-axis is the force and our x-axis is our acceleration. We're going to plot our points and we should get a straight line, straight line graph. Our gradient will be equal to mass. The reason why our gradient will be equal to mass is because gradient, as known as m, is equal to y divided by x. In this case, it is f divided by a, which is the same as saying mass is equal to f over a. When we go back to our Newton's second law of equation where f is equal to m times a. If we want to make m the subject, we take a to the other side, where it becomes f divided by a. Okay, so Mr. Soman obviously showed you the first part of the practical, um, which was uh, altering the force, okay, uh, on the end of the pulley, and the um, we measured the dependent variable was the acceleration. Okay, as you saw, we got a nice direct uh, proportional relationship there, where the gradient is a constant, uh, and it's showing us uh, showed us the uh, mass of the system. Okay. In the second uh, part of this experiment, okay, what we're going to do, our independent variable is going to be the mass, okay? Our dependent variable is going to be the acceleration. Um, control variables are going to be the same thing, the, uh, the mass of the trolley, the same type of trolley, uh, the distance that the trolley passes through, which is 50 centimeters. Uh, our light gate, all our measuring devices are still going to be the same. Okay, so we're now going to show you how to use the data logger okay which is connected to our light gate remember okay this is the light gate this is a close-up uh, so you know this is where the card passes through it starts timing when the card is within the light and then it stops timing when the card is passed through okay so anyway what do we do first to reset it we uh, press above the green and the red buttons there you go next thing you need to press the red button until the Hertz symbol appears. There we go. Press the blue button twice. There you go. And then press the green button for yes. And then press the green button for yes again. And we are all set up. Okay, so that's what you need to do each time you change your mass on the pulley. Okay, so let's take our first reading now. Okay. So let's remember our U, which is the initial velocity, is zero, and I'm going to let go. There we go. So my V, I'm going to take the uh, recording that I get here, which is the time, and you use speed equals distance over time, and my distance is fit, uh, sorry, 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters divided by my time. Okay. So it took 0.84 seconds. Okay, for the trolley to move that distance. Then what am I going to do? So you're going to reset it. It's going to add another mass onto the pulley and uh, take a second reading. There we go. So this should be a lot faster. There we go. So this time was 0.54 seconds. Okay, so you repeat this process until you add three more masses. Okay, just, so just to show you. Okay, I've reset it. I've got three more masses, 100 grams each or 0.1 kilograms each, and I simply add them on to the end of the hanger and repeat my measurements and so on. As you noted down, or hopefully saw in my demonstration, the trolley moved across the, uh, the table quite quickly. Okay, so just for a matter of safety, make sure your fingers aren't close to the pulley, uh, especially also be careful of your feet. Um, you know, because the weight when it hits the bottom, you know, you don't want to injure yourself, okay? Typical exam questions will ask you, you know, what are the uh, risk hazards of particular experiments? In this case, these are the ones that you need to note down. Yeah. Examiners like to ask uh, how you would improve an experiment. In this case, we're using a light gate, okay? This reduces human error, okay? Let's say, for example, this is 10 centimeters. Imagine with your stopwatch, you press start and stop. 
uh, to measure how quickly this piece of card passes a point. That's going to be quite tough to do, okay? There's a lot of human error. By the time you press start on your stopwatch, you needed to have a press stop already, okay? It's within, within a second, remember, the data that we've been collecting, okay? So make sure you can suggest, use a, a light gate uh, when doing this practical because that reduces human error. What right, another thing to consider or to suggest to the examiner is potentially, instead of going up in 100 grams, okay, you could go up if, you're, if your school okay, had these masses, you could go up in, I don't know, 20 grams, you know, 40, 60, and so on, that means you would be, be able to get a, uh, more points on your graph, okay, because as you see, you know, the trolley moves quite quickly across, across the, uh, this wooden plank here, and effectively, if we could uh, slowly increase that acceleration by uh, slowly increasing the amount of mass we add on, on, onto the end of this pulley, um, that would uh, hopefully give us more points to plot. Okay, so that's another way we can improve our experiment, then we can get a more accurate gradient of this line. Let's look at the data analysis. So effectively, it's quite similar to the last experiment, except that this time, um, we're gonna be plotting mass on the y-axis, and we're gonna measure our dependent variable on the x-axis, okay? Now in physics, um, I know you may have been taught that uh, your dependent variable should be on the y-axis. Uh, on the x-axis, in this case, we're going to switch them around just to make uh, this relationship a lot easier to understand. And that is F equals mass times acceleration. So if our mass is on the y-axis, our acceleration is on the x-axis, essentially the area underneath the line is going to be um, our force. But generally, what you want to... Um, to, to gather from this experiment, from this data, is as mass increases, our uh, acceleration also increases. Okay, so that's what we um, want you to get from this part two of this practical.